Well, how do there, chums? Does I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I just want to talk about all these UFO and alien sightings that we're seeing popping up all over the tinterwebs at the moment and what I think about them. Now, firstly, being the Miami Mall alien incident. Now, one of the actual bits of footage, as long as you can get the HD version of that footage, with what looks like a giant alien walking past the front of the actual Miami Mall complex, it looks to me to be like three police officers walking in a line rather than one entity. A lot of the footage out there is quite blurry and it does look like one entity in that footage. There's another bit of footage where you saw see a car panning down the street and there seems to be a large black entity standing in the middle of the road. I don't think it is a large black entity. It looks like a post. <laughs> it's, the, it's just trickery of the eye. And the fact that people have been talking about aliens, that people I imagine seeing aliens. It's, it's almost like pareidolia, where you make patterns out of things, like seeing animals in clouds and things like that. So I don't think there's too much to denote from the Miami incident. The only thing that I find extremely weird about the Miami incident is there's actually people walking around the mall now, and some of them done at night, and you can clearly see that there's CCTV cameras on some of the actual little kiosks. At least I saw two with inside of the footage that I watched anyway. So I would have thought if there was any footage of any sort of troublemakers, be that youths or ruffians or whatever, roustabouts, or be that alien or demon, I'm fairly sure that footage would have been on the tinterwebs by now. Now, a lot of eyewitnesses says that the power was fluctuating, in and out, very temperamental, and even their mobile phones were turning off when they tried to record. If there was some sort of EMP pulse or some sort of electromagnetic interference, we would have seen a blackout within inside of the actual footage that we've seen from the helicopters, the police lights even. So I honestly don't think that that's a thing. So, unless it's in very close quarters, who knows? But at the same time, the fact that there is no footage either way showing one or the other, whether it was delinquents or demons or aliens, that thing, that, that, that's the most curious about all of this. Why all the hush hush? Why not just say, look, come on, pack it in people. This is what happened. Here's the footage. And now it's been that long that you think, well, if they do release footage, they could be fabricated one way or the other. If I do start showing official alien video now, it's like, well, why didn't this pop up like four days ago? You've been in some sort of CGI lab? Have you made this? With the way that CGI is now, it, it's, it's so easy to sort of concoct this sort of stuff. Okay, anyway, moving on from that, there's also the Brazilian aliens with some mountains, and you can see these large, tall beings that don't look too overly human. However, they have got arms and legs like us, and they're bipedal like us. Uh, would alien life look like us, considering about all the different alien life, that, well, all the life that we've got on our planet? You know, there's not many bipedals on our planet. You know, we've got a couple of primates ourselves and so so forth and so on and some penguins and stuff like that. But we haven't really got a lot of bipedals. So what's the chances of bipedals arriving in alien ships? Why aren't they quadrupeds or whatever? Or multrupeds? I don't know. Centipedes. <laughs> There's all sorts of weirdness that the aliens could look like. Yet aliens often look like how we've denoted them to look in movies for freaking eons. I don't know, whenever I see uh, video footage of rather large looking humans or black silhouettes of humans or rather shoddy sort of footage of human-esque creatures, I'm like, well, come on, get closer to these things. Why do we have to have shaky, blurry camera footage? If I saw some weird sort of looking creature, I would head towards it. I mean, yes, I tried to keep myself in reasonable say, distance, but I was trying to get the best footage I possibly can, especially if it could be some of the most amazing footage seen to date. But no, everybody still stands there with shaky ass footage and not try and get any closer. I mean, come on, how much money did people get for photos of Princess Diana when she was about? You know, the better the photo, the better the money, the better the pay. It's the same for frickin' aliens. You know, if you're going to get a really freaking clear picture of an alien or demon or whatever these things are, you're going to be quitting. Get better pictures. 
I know that I will. If, if I ever come across these things, I'm definitely going to get the best picture I possibly can. Because I'd be cash cowing that thing to the bank, mate. Freaking heck, yes I would. So, anyways, I, I just don't think that that sort of footage was all that reliable either. It just doesn't make any sense to me, people. It really doesn't. Especially with the level of zoom that we have now and how decent everybody's pocket cameras are on their phones. We should see better footage of these things. We really should. Okay, and then that brings me to the last bit of footage, which is the jellyfish UFO that was flying over a rack or wherever it was. Um, but yeah, that thing's pretty weird. It's not aerodynamic by any sense of the imagination, so if this thing did come from another world, entering into our atmosphere, it would have burned to a freaking crisp. That thing's got as much aerodynamics as a freaking brick. So... I don't think it's extraterrestrial as in it came from space, or if it did come from space, it's probably a probe from a larger ship. And it doesn't look like it's some sort of manned vehicle. You don't see much rotation going on, it just sort of drifts. It almost looks like a collection of freaking, you know those um, foil-filled helium balloons? It looks like a load of foil balloons that have sort of come together after a party or something, all coagulated, some half deflated, some not, some that are completely bedraggled, and it's just sort of meandering along. That's what it looked like to me. It doesn't look like it's a proper ship. It doesn't look like any thought or imagination has gone into building that thing. Or if it is some sort of device, it's probably some sort of spy balloon or something like that that's been created just to carry a host of cameras just to get a little bit of a flyby. Probably something quite crudely put together. You know, I, don't, I just don't see it as being technologically advanced looking in any way sense or shape or form so yeah that's my take on that one so out of all this footage there's nothing that's got me going hmm that's unusual the only thing that is unusual is the lack of real actual footage and incitement coming from the miami incident that's a bit weird and from what i'm hearing police have still got a presence there right now keeping that area closed down and questioning people that are going near and apparently the shops aren't open to their full capacity or anything like that. I need to get up out of here. Okay, there is legit cops right behind me, right around the area where everything went down. And there's a security checkpoint where you have to show identification. It makes no sense at all. And I'm definitely on the wrong side of the road right now. Still. So there's a little bit of weirdness still going around over there. I mean, I'm not in Miami. I can't actually go there and physically confirm or, or deny any of this. I'm just going by what I'm hearing online, people. Anyway, I got myself a lovely cup of tea. If, if I come across some alien footage or UFO footage that I think has got some sort of credibility or credence to it, I'd be sure to share it with you people in the viewerverse. But right now, I honestly think a lot of this I think a lot of this hitting mainstream news is something that we should be talking about. And the reason why I think we should be talking about it is I honestly think they're getting us ready, mentally, for the idea that aliens could be here, could be already on this planet, and maybe even been here for some time. I think some of the revelations that are going to come, come about, about our own origins, could be linked to aliens like the ancient alien stories. There's a lot inside of Sumerian tablets and glyphs and all sorts of other writings from that era of time, the first religion ever recorded, to say that aliens seeded us upon this world and the actual gods came from the stars and they mentioned them as being the Anunnaki. There's a lot of people that put that into sort of con contention, saying that, you know, Alexander Stitchin or whatever his name was that actually done those translations is not a variable or reliable source. But there have been other translations that have come quite close. There is quite a lot of stuff that they do actually agree on. And one of the things that they agree on is this Anunnaki. The thing that they don't really agree on too much is the idea of the wandering planet, this planet Nibiru or planet X. And that they might be returning on some sort of wandering planet that's on an elliptical orbit. And I kind of feel that that perhaps, yeah, that's probably a little bit far-fetched. I honestly think that the aliens actually reside inside of our planet, inside of our oceans and places like that. And they come and check on us from time to time using little grey aliens, which are actual drones. They're actual sort of like 
I know, biologically created sort of creatures that if we did see, we're not going to be too scared of. We're not going to be overtly afraid of because they're little grey guys that are quite cute. And they look a little bit human, almost childlike, in fact, with their big eyes and their larger uh, heads and things like that. We're not going to overly fear them. I think the actual aliens that reside in our planet might be a little bit more scarier than that. Perhaps even have this reptilian look to them, people. Or maybe be these black silhouettes. Or even demon-like. There was talks back in the Vietnam War that when night vision goggles were given to the soldiers, they were given a certain type of dye inside of their actual goggles that was like red rather than the green that we have now. But a lot of the soldiers reported seeing demons flying around by their helicopters. Large freaking demonic looking creatures. They even took pot shots at them people. Take a little bit of a look into that because that I think has got merit. Because it's not just one or two accounts. We're talking quite a lot of freaking accounts. And why did they ban that technology and move it on to a different technology when it seemed to work. But worked in a roundabout way that perhaps we shouldn't see or perceive. Anyway, that's everything that I've got for you, people. And if you do really want to uh, tantalise your taste buds with a little bit more about aliens residing inside of our planet, I strongly suggest checking out the diary of Richard Admiral E. Byrd, a highly decorated naval officer and pilot. I've got a whole video on him. Go check it out over there, because what he says about UFOs and being accosted while he was inside of his plane by this alien race and taken inside of the inner Earth it's pretty darn freaking out there, whether it's legit or not, it's for you to decide. I've done a real or fake video on that one, people. Anyway, check that one out. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.